Hey guys, back uh, and we're dealing in this video with the concept of double consciousness. So um, this is an idea that is very closely related to the veil. In fact, I think without the veil, it is impossible. I think Du Bois would say, although I don't want to put words into his mouth, but that double consciousness does not um, does not emerge. So the what it is, is uh, he describes it as a sensation, and I've kind of encapsulated it here, a sensation of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others. So in what he's talking about, and I don't want to generalize it first, what he's talking about is being a black person in a white world and looking at and under, being aware of um, oneself as a black person in a white world, um, seeing oneself from the perspective of the dominant uh, power, which is white people. And because America at the time is particularly racist, not that we're, you know, crushing things right now, but, you know, we're talking early, uh, late 19th, early 20th century, so lynchings are happening a lot. And he talks about the fact that it, to be uh, to be a black person in this time is to, you know, kind of have a normal consciousness of this is how I understand myself and this is how I, you know, want to go through my life. But then also being aware that, but this is how I am seen by other people. And these are the limitations that I'm going to have to put on myself because this is how I am seen. So the idea of a double consciousness. Um, he talks about the fact that this emerges in a social context where there is a subjugated, I'm sorry, a subjugated people whose experience is invisible to dominant social powers. Um, so I talk about here, this is a shorthand, emerges in context of invisibility. You want to get in your notes that it is, um, that the experience a person has is invisible uh, to society. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it, that that experience is invisible to the dominant social powers. So uh, again, if you're a person of color, I apologize. I'm not trying to, uh, again, explain your experience to you. I'm just trying to clarify what Du Bois said. Um, so what he's, what he's talking about there is the idea that I am in this situation where I am suffering. I mean, to be a person of color in the early to mid 20th century is, especially to be a black person, the threat of death is constant. I, I talked about lynchings in the last video. I mean, it could happen at any moment and not because you've done something, I mean, nothing merits that, but you could have done nothing. It, you could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time and a bunch of white people decide to make an example of you. And, and the thing is that that experience is just not acknowledged by most white people. So, I mean, imagine, again, if you're a person of color, I'm not asking you to imagine if you're a white person, really, if you're a white man, because women could probably relate to this as well. The idea of sexual harassment being something that just is like not acknowledged by men in their lives, that it's just, well, yeah, you just live with that. But the experience of it, I would assume, sucks to be going about your life and just be getting unwanted uh, attention and have no no sense that your experience is, is visible to anybody else. Um, so it's in that specific context, a subjugated people um, who have their lived experience just ignored. It's invisible to other people. That 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 is where double consciousness emerges. Um, he talks about the fact that there are, there's obviously a lot of bad. He does talk about some potential good that comes from this, but I don't want to make it seem like, so thank God we treat people badly so we can get this, uh, this positive outcome. Du Bois isn't saying that. Um, the obvious tension that an individual is going to feel, but the tension that that individual is going to bring home after living their life in that context, uh, the way their relationships are going to be affected, all of that tension is going to cause big problems. But he also says, 
again, a small silverish lining. It's not, doesn't justify anything. But he says it also provides people with a unique and he suggests perhaps enhanced insight into society as a whole. And I would wholeheartedly agree with that. A white person is very unlikely to come up with this idea, or at least a white man is very unlikely to come up with this idea because I don't have to have a double consciousness. I experience the world in a very different way because I'm part of the dominant group. Um, but it absolutely signifies something real in our society. This veil, this, this is like the effect of the veil, and the veil is the social fact, to use Durkheim's term, that I, as a white man going about my life, am not, I don't want to say not likely, I mean, I, I can't imagine how I would see that. I, I don't think it's, I don't think even with the power of imagination, I don't think that that's something that I'm likely to find. Um, so, that's double consciousness. There are, uh, and, uh, so at the risk of, again, kind of beating the drum of sociology discriminated against people who were brilliant, uh, there is uh, this concept of double consciousness. There are some sociologists who say, why is this not as important in our understanding of social psychology and self-development as George Herbert Mead? Or to use somebody that I use in intro, in intro um, Charles Horton Cooley and his idea of the looking glass self. Um, some sociologists say this idea of double consciousness is at least as important in understanding the development of a self if that self isn't white and male. Uh, because this experience of having your, the, the experience of the, of the looking glass self is I live my life and I get reactions from people and I incorporate their reactions about me into my understanding of myself. Well, what happens when your experience is completely ignored by people? If that's the experience of 70% or more of the population, just because some brilliant white people came up, white men came up with the idea of the generalized other and the I and the me or the looking glass self, that doesn't make those things uh, a more accurate description of self-development than this. But in most intro textbooks, the I and the me and the generalized other, they're going to be talked about. Uh, in my intro class, the, um, the looking glass self is talked about. I have not talked about double consciousness, but there's a sense in get in preparing this for you guys that probably I should be doing that 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 is that that is not an anomalous um process that just happens oh occasionally and it's because of the accident of racism it's hard to call racism an accident in the year but when I'm recording this 2021 when we've been dealing with it since 1619 uh so I think so it seems to me that this idea of double consciousness absolutely deserves as primary of a place uh, as the looking glass self or the I, the me, and the generalized other. Those concepts apply to everybody. They should not be invalidated. Um, but the double consciousness only doesn't apply to people who are in a dominant on this the, the dominant side of the veil and, and whatever veil we're talking about, whether it's a racial veil or a gender veil or an able-bodied, disabled-bodied veil, whatever. Um, okay, so I think that probably, yeah, that probably does it. Um, so in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to, so we've dealt with his two big concepts, the veil and double consciousness. Um, Again, huge enough that it's conceivable that we should be rebuilding a uh, sociological theory based on those concepts. Uh, we've done his big two. In the next video, which will be our last on Du Bois, I believe, we're going to talk about how, again, how race is 
part of a multifactorial analysis and how he talks about the economy as working with race to really create people's experience. So I'll see you in that video.